You all know the phrase, Lord willing and the creek don't rise? Well, the creek rose this morning. <laughs> but we shall persist. Hey friends, my name is Kat. Welcome back to my channel, Boss Babe DIY. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how I made over a friend's rental bathroom for less than $250. As many of you know, my husband and I just bought a 1930s stone cottage and we're working on renovating it to turn it into our dream home. If you haven't seen the walkthrough of that or the updates, I'll link those in the description box below. But because the renovations are so extensive, there's absolutely no way we could stay in this home. It's literally down to the studs right now. So we've been staying in a friend's rental in the meantime. And because I'm me and I can't let anything alone, I asked if I could make over his bathroom. The bathroom itself is pretty small and frankly not very inviting, so I wanted to find some budget and renter-friendly options that would make this space a lot cozier and fun to live in day to day. So without further ado, let's jump right on into this makeover. So if someone clearly did a recent renovation on this bathroom, you can see the tile is pretty new, the, the shower and tub itself looks pretty nice and there's all new fixtures, um, hello, but you can see uh, the sink is 15 inches and this is the only storage to be had in the whole bathroom. Um, my husband and I are both over six feet, if you didn't know that about me, uh, so we need a little bit more room. So I am intending on taking this bar down, building some shelves to go here. Um, and then I'm gonna be putting up a, a curtain, a shower curtain. And then I'm gonna be putting up some bathroom hooks, sorry, towel hooks right here. And then do some hooks on the back of this door as well. I'm also gonna do some fun stuff with paint. And then um, this, is, this is what we're gonna tackle first. Uh, as lovely as this view is, and it's fairly private back there, I'm just not comfortable <laughs> with seeing straight out um, in, uh, into the backyard where there are definitely neighbors back there. So I'm gonna do a, um, a frosted window applique that is great for renters. Um, but the very first thing we're gonna tackle is this, uh, this home, the previous renters evidently had an ant problem got it sprayed for and it's taken care of but I was able to see where they're coming in there's a tiny little hole right here so we're gonna start by cleaning this whole window sealing it up and uh, going from there sometimes we got to do the dirty work before we do the fun stuff so here we go my assistant will also be helping today as always right Ripley are you ready since this window is inside the shower, it's almost certainly going to get wet, so I'm using a silicone caulk here. This is 100% waterproof, so it's perfect for bathroom and kitchen applications. Now I put my entire body in front of the camera, but what I did here is I put that silicone into my caulk gun, spread a bead around all of the edges of the window, and then wiped away any excess with my finger. It dries in about 30 minutes. Next, I'm moving on to my frosted window applique. Now, if you're doing this at home, it is imperative that you make sure this window is clean and dry before you try to apply this. I found this frosted window applique at Walmart for $20. It comes in a roll just over six feet long. So what I'm doing is I hold it up to my window, measure it out and cut off any excess, then peel away the back film and attach it to the window. The thing I like most about this applique is there's no actual adhesive on the back of it. It just clings to the window through pure static electricity, so it's perfect for renters. If ever you move out or decide you don't like it anymore, all you have to do is peel it off and there's no residue left on the window. Once I've ensured my applique fits in the window, I line it up with the top corners and then I use an ultra fancy scraper that I carry around with me in my wallet to scrape out any bubbles working from the top all the way down. Boom, instant privacy. Now that I'm free from any peeping toms, I'm moving on to removing this old towel bar. I don't know about you guys, but I've never been a huge fan of towel bars. I much prefer hooks, but you know, to each their own.
Once I'd removed all of my hardware and wall anchors, I filled in the holes left in the wall with some spackle, waited for it to dry, and then sanded it back down. I also set this mirror aside in preparation for its own little makeover later. So I found some inspiration photos uh, that I thought were really cool that do a two-tone look. So that's what I'm going to be doing on this wall. From about here up, I'm going to be doing a really warm white. And then from here down, I'm going to be doing like a deep pink, almost terracotta color to give it like a really fun boho look. Okay, here are the colors I'll be painting the wall. This is my white. It's called Bleach Linen. It's nice and warm. And then here's the pink. Uh, it is rightfully called Drama Queen. Uh, I love it so much. I think this is gonna look really cool, guys. Now, if you've watched any of my previous room makeover videos, you will recognize this paint. It's Bear's Ultra Scuff Defense. I'm a huge fan. It goes on really nicely and it is super durable. Since this is a bathroom, I really wanted to make sure this paint stood the test of time. Okay, now that I have finished the white color on the top of the room, I am going to move on to my like pinky terracotta color. Um, I'm going to be creating a line across the wall with painter's tape. I'm gonna be using this uh, painter's tape that is specifically for delicate surfaces. So since this is a freshly painted coat, I don't wanna paint the bottom coat and then peel it off and then the paint come with it. Um, I'm gonna be lining it up with uh, the tile lines because I'm OCD like that um, and just making sure it's a level line all the way around so let's get going on that. I want to get a really clean line all the way across here, so I'm going to try something I saw on the internet. I'm going to actually paint below here with this same white color first, and that should basically seal up this edge, so if anything seeps through, it'll be the same color as this. And then afterwards, I'll go back and paint the pink color on top of it, and we'll see if that gives me a super clean line. We'll find out together. I mean, come on, look at this color. Are you in love with it? Because I'm totally in love with it. When I approached my friend about painting his bathroom half white, half pink, his one request was that I not make it too girly. Now, I'm of the mindset that pink can be for everybody, but I think I understood what he meant. So what I love about this paint color specifically is that I think it's that perfect balance between that warm, bright pop of color I'm trying to achieve while still maintaining this rich, earthy undertone. All right, let's see if this worked. Look at that. It's so crisp. Well, dang.
I'm not even halfway done and already this bathroom is giving me 10 times more joy than it did when I first walked in here. Instead of buying a whole new mirror, I decided to give the existing mirror a little bit of a lift with some spray paint. I scuff sanded all of the edges with a 220 grit sandpaper and then sprayed it with this Rust-Oleum all surface paint and primer in black. Now, as I mentioned, my husband and I are currently living in this house as a rental, which means a lot of my bigger tools are either packed away or really difficult to get to. So for these wooden shelves, what I did is I went to my local Home Depot. I found the piece of one by eight pine common board that I wanted to use and I asked an associate there to cut it down to the length that I needed it. Since these are floating shelves, I wasn't too terribly worried about the accuracy of the cuts, so I was fine letting somebody else do it in this case. This is actually a really good option if you are a renter or if you just don't have any kind of saw at home. Any big box store will cut down a piece of lumber for you as long as you bring them your measurements and as long as it's over 12 inches, I think that's the rule. But the best part is they'll do it for absolutely free. So just ask an associate next time you're at a box store and you need something cut down. I found these six inch corner braces at Home Depot to act as my shelf brackets. Again, I'm not crazy about silver in this space, so I decided to give them a little paint job as well. I'm just removing any grease and grime with some regular dish soap, dried them all off and sanded them down with a 220 grit sandpaper again. I spray them all down with two coats of Rust-Oleum's metallic spray paint in gold. Once everything was dry, it was time to mount the brackets to the actual shelves. I'm having to work here on my coffee table because did I mention that I'm living out of a rental right now? Regardless, I may do. So I'm using my speed square here to mark exactly where I want my brackets to go, and then I'm marking where I need to pre-drill holes for my screws. Here's a little trick I use when I'm trying to pre-drill into a piece of wood that I don't want to go all the way through. I'll hold up my bit to the edge of the piece I'm drilling into, mark the depth at which I want to stop, and put a piece of blue tape around my bit. Once that piece of blue tape hits the surface of the material, I know I shouldn't drill any further or I run the risk of putting a hole all the way through the other side. Now it's time to hang these babies. I used my stud finder to find the studs in the wall where I would be mounting these shelves. As luck would have it, one side of my shelves lined up perfectly with one of the studs, so I was able to drill directly into that. The other side of my shelf I decided to use wall anchors for. Now wall anchors come in all sorts of varieties with different weight limits on them. I decided to go with these 50 pound wall anchors. Now it might be a little overkill, but I wanted to err on the side of caution since I didn't know what all would be on these shelves moving forward. From there, it's pretty much just rinse and repeat. Now, if you're hanging more than just a couple of shelves, instead of having to measure the distance between each, if you know they're going to be equidistant, what you can do is cut down a piece of lumber and put that in between the shelves as you're mounting them to make sure that they are spaced evenly apart. If you want to see a more detailed description of how to do that, check out part three of my closet makeover series that I've linked above. Since my towel bar was long gone, I decided to install a small towel ring next to the sink. See the difference in anchor here? It's a lot lighter weight since I know there won't be anything really heavy hanging off of this ring. 
At least I hope not. Speaking of towels, I found these two adorable light wood towel hooks that I installed right next to the shower. They're both functional and they add a really nice boho flair to this room makeover. Of course, this bathroom wouldn't be complete without a shower curtain. I found this gorgeous boho shower curtain at Target for $25. All that's left is to add a few finishing touches and this bathroom makeover is complete. In case you forgot, this is what the bathroom looked like before. Stark, empty, and lacking in storage. And this is what she looks like now. I'll say even these few changes made a huge impact. I went from hating this bathroom to actually enjoying spending my time in here. The best part about these updates is that they are entirely renter friendly. If you're moving out, all you really have to do is remove those frosted window clings, fill in some holes, and put on a couple fresh coats of paint. Although in this case, I think my landlord's going to be keeping it just how it is. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys, for this boho inspired rental friendly bathroom makeover. I hope it inspired you to pick up a paintbrush and tackle a space in your home or rental that needs a little bit of love. Make sure that you like and subscribe because I've got a lot more DIYs and renovation updates coming your way soon. Until then, I'll see you next time. Assistant approved. And what do you think? Do you like the makeover? I'll take that as a yes.